This is not a car. This is a $30 billion technology solution to urban transportation. Let me break it down. These cars have been trained over millions of miles of drive and uses the same circuitry as ChatGPT to allow it to navigate some complex situations. And it inspires <laughs> awe and delight. In San Francisco, where Cruise, a self-driving service, operates, it has been shown to reduce vehicle accidents by 94%. This technology promises to make the roads significantly safer, reduce traffic and congestion, and drastically improve the quality of our lives. But Will it? Before we get into that, let's take a step back and get an understanding of where this technology is currently at. There's a spectrum of self-driving. Levels one to three are basically fancy driver assist. A couple of brands are at level four autonomy, which means full self-driving, but within constraints. For example, training vehicles to drive anywhere that doesn't have too much complexity, like just on highways or in more complex areas, but they have to be trained there. You can't just drop them into a new city. And the software is getting pretty advanced. The self-driving software used to be based on coded rules, but the new versions operate way more like ChatGPT with neural networks. And much like ChatGPT, the size of the training data has a huge impact on how these systems perform. The most recent Tesla self-driving software has been trained on millions and millions of hours of driving. This means it drives more like humans than ever before. Here's scenes from Elon's most recent live stream. The car is able to navigate construction zones, waits at green lights where there's a queue, and slows down in areas with a lot of pedestrian activity. But these cars are not without their problems. A future is here. A bizarre encounter between police and a driverless car has gone viral on social media. So then looked inside that car only to discover Ain't nobody in it. And then the car speeds away from the officers. Everyone, including police, were laughing. Level 5 autonomy, where cars can operate anywhere in all conditions, is still a long ways away. But personal self-driving and ride-hailing self-driving services are likely coming to your city soon. So will this revolutionize transportation, solve traffic congestion, eliminate parking problems, and improve our lives? Let's understand the data. Findings at MIT suggest that when 50% of the cars on the road are autonomous, this will improve road capacity by 6%. Given these statistics, road conditions should improve with the move to self-driving in general. More data at MIT suggests that 30% of traffic in urban areas is just people looking for parking. And 94% of the time, cars are parked. Based on these statistics, with self-driving ride-hailing services, cities could drastically reduce the parking garages and the total number of vehicles. That's because one self-driving ride-hailing car could drop someone off at work at 8 a.m., then pick up another at 8.30 a.m., and then another at 9 a.m. Plus, the use of demand-based pricing could moderate travel behaviors encouraging people to travel at non-peak times. This would, in fact, allow cities to get rid of a lot of their parking. Just look at how much of our cities are currently dedicated to parking. This would free up areas for new parks, green areas, playgrounds, new housing, and vibrant community areas. And the capacity improvements of self-driving, coupled with ride-hailing services and demand-based pricing could shape consumer behavior and reduce traffic congestion. So self-driving vehicles could really improve our lives. But wait, when you dig a little deeper past these high level statistics, it starts to become a little problematic. Proving road capacity by 6% seems great, but this is effectively the same as adding an additional lane for traffic. And the data on this is pretty clear. You might think that adding an additional lane will help, and it does temporarily. But then people switch to driving, noticing that it's faster, and the speed regresses back to the speed of the alternatives. This is known as induced demand. And when you investigate ride hailing services, the hope was that people would ditch their personal vehicles and take transit, walk, or bike, and then supplement with a ride hailing car ride in those unique cases when you needed a car. But that's not what happened. 47% of trips replaced personal car rides, taxis, and rental cars. But over half of the rides were people that would have previously taken transit, walked, or biked, which drastically increased the number of vehicle miles, making congestion even worse. And when you think about a typical trip, you drive the car and you park. And if you take an Uber, the car has to drive to you and then to your destination. The data shows that this is even true for shared rides. For every mile that Uber pool saves, 
it increases the number of vehicle miles by 2.6. So even though there's capacity benefits to self-driving, these benefits will be eroded in six months to a year because of induced demand. And with the move to self-driving ride hailing services, it's basically what we have today. And the data is pretty clear. It does have some benefits like less parking is required, but overall it takes people that would have previously taken transit, biked or walked and puts them in a car. And not only that, it more than doubles the vehicle miles driven, which makes traffic significantly worse. So will self-driving vehicles reduce congestion? No. Self-driving personal vehicles, self-driving ride hailing services will actually drastically make traffic worse within urban areas. But it begs the question, this is a remarkable technology. Where can it be beneficial? Small scale studies and data from companies like Metro Micro in LA show that self-driving ride hailing services can be beneficial in connecting people to transit stations in rural areas that don't have transit and for transporting people with mobility issues. Therefore, these systems can serve as an extension to the transit system as opposed to a replacement. And the other notable use case is long haul trucking. Unfortunately, these use cases are pretty limited and this technology is incredibly expensive. And it's only feasible if the masses adopt it. And if that happens, it'll likely make our lives worse. The only way to meaningfully improve transportation is to move to something that is closer to Dutch style street design. I have a separate video on that, which I'll link here. Let me know what you think about self-driving in the comments. If you can like this video and subscribe, that'd be awesome. This is an ongoing series, so let me know if there's any other innovations that you think will shape the future of cities, and I'll look into it. Thanks for watching.